The Good Samaritan is something that you hear on television every night. I marvel at this. Have you heard of the Good Samaritan? Someone stops by the side of the road and renders aid to someone. Uh, and it's become a biblical thing to do. I'm not sure that they understand what the ramifications were that Jesus talked about in his parable. But still, it's become, and I'm grateful that they're talking about the Good Samaritan. Who was the Good Samaritan, though? Know? He was part of a religious parable that Jesus was telling. Religious? Yes. Because Jesus went to the extreme. He didn't talk about anybody being wrong. He didn't talk about anybody not rendering aid, some people doing it. He was talking in the extreme. The, well, first of all, we know the story. We know that uh, this man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. He was probably a Jew. Now, it doesn't say it in the scripture, but I'm going to say it. Anyway, probably a Jew. The first person to come by was a priest. Now, he used the word priest very purposefully. He wanted them to know what the priest should do and what the priest didn't do. This happened so many times that Jesus would give an extreme idea of what happened. So the priest saw him, and the priest then passed by. Perhaps he didn't want to soil his robes. Then a Levite came. Now you have to know what a Levite is. A Levite is a car driver. <laughs> Uh, basically, one who opens and closes doors, one who puts the sacrifices on, one who... Uh, but he is a person who is a helper to the priest. So, he passes by. And I think probably, and I'm reading into the scripture a little bit, that he had to uh, arrange a piece for two harps at home. And so he, he left. He didn't have time to stop and, and talk to this or help. Uh, but then along comes a Samaritan. And again, you'll see we're talking about two Jewish ecclesiastical people. And now we're talking about a Samaritan. A Samaritan is an outcast. The Jews didn't want anything to do with Samaritans. So Jesus loved to do this. He loved to just put it in their face. Okay, this is what prejudice means. And this is where it falls apart. And we all love this story. We love the fact that the Samaritan stopped. And he helped the Jew, even though the Jew wouldn't talk to him properly. Red or day, poured in oil and the wine. Wrapped him, put him on his animal, took him to an inn. Paid money to take care of a stranger. And then he said, if there's any more expense, I'll come back and take it. We all knew this. Okay, that's what it is. Now, if you remember the question, the question was, who is my neighbor? And so in this particular case, the Samaritan was the neighbor. Who is your neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Ever think of that? Is this simply, we're going to be ready uh, when there is someone who has had a mishap on the side of the road, and then we're going to render aid? Uh, what about the tragic situation? The youth pastor who lost his life uh, just uh, weeks ago uh, because he stopped the render aid and someone ran into him. This is, I mean, it's, the world knows what it means. But do we know what a neighbor is? Um, a neighbor could be someone who loves you. You ever think of it? The person next door bugs you. Now, don't raise your hand. <laughs> but I'll bet there's someone bugging you. You know, that's a good term. It's, uh, it's something that uh, we know what that means. Okay? What if the person uh, lives in your house? Bugs you. Hello? Saul Garza? My husband's bugging me. You could do that. No one's that. You understand? A neighbor could be someone that's not going to be on television news. It's just someone you have to deal with. Now, originally I had <laughs> this, uh, Tony and Charlene, about this. 
This is probably the 20th version of this message that I've come up with. I've known for two months that Pastor was going to be away on this particular day. So I'm so grateful, and I'm sure you are too, that it's going to be at least over. Uh, and it's changed so many times I get confused. But it used to be called Copper, Casey, and what's his name? What kind of a title was that? Those are the names of three dogs that I've had dealings with. And it was kind of interesting. I thought it was kind of, but it was more thinking about dogs. What's his name? I didn't like it all. Uh, and Copper, I loved. And Casey, I wasn't sure about Casey. But I'm just going to talk about Casey because time goes a flurrying by here. Casey, we had moved to Chicago. Are you listening? Okay. And we had moved to Chicago, and uh, Heather and Charmaine and I were traveling evangelists, whatever that is. Uh, but we went from church to church, denomination to denomination, and we loved it. And we used a uh, Winnebago, a small Winnebago, and that's what we more or less lived in. We rented a house, we'd be there for a couple of weeks a month, and in a couple of weeks, we would be on the road. We did this for 10 years. And I knew nothing about cars, let alone an RV. To this day, I don't know anything about it. But I'll keep that in mind now as I tell the story. We moved to Chicago to be with Heather, really. She had gone to college. She was going to be at Wheaton College. And since we were traveling evangelists, it wouldn't matter where we lived. So instead of Pittsburgh, we moved to Chicago to be about 10 minutes from her campus. And so we were in this, you have to see this now. Uh, every house in our part of the Illinois was so close together, all that there was was a driveway in between. That's all. And it was that close. Your neighbor, you know, it wasn't like on the next hill or something or whatever, right next door. Now, I have to explain the mentality of Chicago. Anybody from Chicago here? I don't know if you're from. Okay, Carl. Okay. All right. But the way our neighbors did it was they maintained their privacy by not looking at us, let alone not talking. Okay? So you live that close, but if you don't look or talk, then you have your own private world. You understand? And it was, it's okay, we respected that. That seemed to be okay. No, they had a dog. This is dog number two. You won't hear about one and three. Dog number two. And Casey was his name. He was an older German shepherd. And he had Twenty years straight up, and he did nothing but look at me. Now, he didn't bark, he didn't growl. Do you know any people like that? <laughs> they, they just ignored, or they wasn't ignoring, he was actually checking what I was doing. I love dogs. I love dogs. And so, like, he was a nice dog and whatever. So I didn't bother with him. I didn't. I looked at him, he looked at me, and that was the end of the conversation. Uh, poor Charmaine. For 49 years, she's had to put up with us. Uh, she said, you know, I hear a noise in the motor of the RV. You should check it out. And I said, okay. But I'm thinking this way. It had 200,000 miles on it. You could hear lots of noises <laughs> with that being. But I figured that was my job and she wanted me to do that. So I went up and it, remember the tiny little driveway we had here? And I went up and I laid on my back and I backed underneath and I'm looking up. Yep, it's a motor. <laughs> it's a game we play, Charmaine and I. She knows I know nothing about <laughs> motors or anything or a mechanical pencil. I what? 
So we do this all the time. She does it, I know. Anyway, so I was up there, and I looked up, and I saw there's some black wires going different places. Yeah. That's the radiator, I think. Uh, the battery. Two tires. I'm doing this inventory, like a great mechanic. And I'm looking around and checking all out. I must have been under there about five, seven minutes. I figured that would get Charmaine off my back. <laughs> I hate to be honest about it. All at once, a dog's head appeared under my van no more than a foot away from me. It was Casey. And Casey was looking at me. And I knew instantly who it was. And I thought, I hoped he was coming to check me out. So I patted him on the head. What do you do with a dog? I patted him on the head. Remember, he had never spoken. He had never been on my property in a year. He wouldn't do it. And I, I said, hey, Casey, I'm OK. He looked at me. I thought he kind of nodded his head. He backed up and went back to his statue position in his property. Is that something or what? Dogs are noble. But he can't fool me, Casey. You can't fool me. You are a first responder. <laughs> Let's put it in today's terms. A first responder. How lovely. You think, perhaps, there are people out there who don't care about you. They care. They're just in the business of their lives and what's going on in their lives. But they care. You know, it's a little sad. I, I think that what we do as Christians is that we are very quick when something dire happens. Uh, and I think our Jesus is telling us that we're to be good neighbors constantly, not just when there's a death in the family, when we send flowers, or we put flowers out on a street corner, or we put teddy bears if it's a, a little child. I think God wants us to be first responders uh, in a different kind of a way. Remember, all this Good Samaritan parable is religious. And I feel this way, that there are people who are out there who are hurting. And they're screaming <clears throat> on the inside that they're hurting. Perhaps you can't hear it, but you can see it. You can look into the eyes of people. And they may even bug you. Might be somebody at work. Somebody who's giving you a bad time. Someone who's ignoring you or passing you for promotion. <clears throat> or whatever is going on. But still, that person needs you. You have the gospel. You have the words, the precious words of Jesus saying we should be good neighbors. I'd like to throw out a challenge, if I may, and then I'm going to leave town for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Pastor will be back. He can talk about the Detroit Lions.